I'm Mike Castle, and I decided to educate my peers on percussion rooms. So, a little bit of brainstorming about why I did it. Uh, two years ago, career joined with uh, Eli Whitney and Creed football team to create the Creed Career Howland Wolves football team. And I was elected captain last year. So this whole past um, season, I've been really bonding with my brothers as a football team. And as I grew with them, these are just a senior class, but there's 40 of us. And this is just a senior class, so they're younger. And we have to look out for each member being that it's a freshman, sophomore, it doesn't matter. And a lot of what I've noticed is that they don't choose to um, protect themselves as much as they should, which is why I see a lot of them leaving the football team because of concussions. And as a captain, I felt it was my duty to go ahead and educate my peers here at Career about concussion awareness, just not for football, but as a captain, I know that in any sport it's possible and nobody should get hurt in a way that affects their brain. So <clears throat> my initial plans, uh, I initially thought of having a poster board, a movie screening of the movie Concussion, starring Will Smith, and to promote the football team through this because yes, concussions are dangerous, but if you play right and play smart, you can get through it without having a concussion. That's what I do. And over time, some of the changes that occurred were I added CTE into it. Uh, I added brochures that you have in front of you, surveys to my peers that I actually presented to. I was certified by the CDC to um, diagnose students with concussions as a coach. Uh, uh, the movie actually got denied because it was viewed as impractical at the time. And uh, I got my coaches involved as well, not only getting information from them, but also making them take quizzes themselves to see how much they knew about concussions. Uh, some of my resources were Mr. Coco, Careers Athletic Staff, because they all work as a trio to help me out. Uh, my coach, the athletic trainer, Ms. Marina, the Center for Disease Control, uh, Boston University for the CTE research, Football USA for overall concussion, and uh, Play Hard, Die Young by Ben Umalu, which is the book he wrote. Uh, my final outcome ended up being the poster board. And as you can see, I was actually able to present to my personal finance business class, and here they are. And uh, I also presented to my three lunch waves on B-Day. And some kids actually took away from it more than I expected. <clears throat> here we go with Frank actually thanking me. Uh, and as I said, I was certified by the CDC to diagnose my peers with concussions and care for them. And this is, these are some of the questions I had on my survey, such as, <clears throat> would you consider yourself athletic and what sports do you play just to see who my audience was, who I was talking to? Do you play for the school to see if they are or not? If they are, they're being supervised and that's a little bit better. But if they're just playing basketball outside, you know, they don't have anyone to be there watching them. So just questions to get to know my audience and who I was speaking to. Uh, and my magnet theme for this capstone was I am a business student, but I, I also connected to health. Uh, the business side of it was the various health products that they created, such as the uh, headband collision sensors by TrueX Technologies, which measures the impact of every collision that you take from football. So if you end up taking too many, they will pull you out before you get hit hard enough to actually be concussed. And the NFL itself is a billion dollar industry, which is why they fought so hard to keep information like CTE uh, a secret because they don't want to scare younger players because once they grow up there will be no food. Um, I connected it to health also not only because obviously this has a lot to do with the human body but because career as a school has allowed me to not only focus on my business track but I've been exposed to health um, health departments as well like uh, my biology class obviously taught me a lot about the brain the body itself so I was able to use that the little bit of knowledge that I knew and what I knew from personal experience from football to actually incorporate this into my uh, project. And my business classes as well, like marketing, business constant careers, they gave me the skills as a freshman that I perfected as I grew up here at the school to come up with this, this board. And my marketing class actually helped me come up with the survey, such as 
doing my market research as if I was starting a business. Um, how's it going? How have I grown as a student here at Career? Obviously, I've become a whole different person. When I was in middle school, I was shy, I was quiet. I did have friends, but I didn't really put too much into school. You know, I just came, did my work, and went home. But I really opened up here at Career. I, I'm in a bunch of different um, clubs now. I'm president of National Business Honor Society. I'm vice president of DECA. Uh, I'm captain of the football team, so obviously I've really grown out of my shell, and I've been able to complete better and better work as I've progressed to the point where now, even after I leave, Coach Giorgini wants to keep my post support to educate for the generations coming to career. So my reflection, some of the obstacles that I faced were this movie screening denial, which definitely set me back a couple um, weeks because that was one of my main things, so I had to come up with something to make up for it. Uh, I was going through a football season, AP classes, uh, applying for colleges, so obviously time management was an issue, but thankfully I was able to get through that. Uh, I had to miss my accounting classes to present, as well as taking time off from personal, fit, finance, per, personal fitness to uh, present to them. And I also had to balance the promotion of the football team with concussion education because obviously it's hard to give a pros and cons to something that's so dangerous. Like my, I find it more important to educate them on the realness of how dangerous concussion can be than simply just promote them, promote the football team and ask them to do something that could end up harming them again. So it was tough to find the balance in that. But that's when I came up with my idea for prevention to actually explain how we are taking steps to prevent that with new tackling techniques and just overall better equipment. And these are just my work cited. All right, if you have any questions, I'll take them now. Two questions, two minutes, clarify questions. Anybody need anything? Um, hmm. How much training did you have to undergo to become certified by CC? It was a two week process with that. Two weeks process. Okay. Um, how do you think that you, um, dealt with the idea of problem solving and critical thinking? You know? Yeah, well obviously my obstacles, if you go back two slides, my obstacles that I faced, I had to find a way to overcome them and critical think, critical think through the, um, the movie screen denial was my main setback, which I really had to think of other ways to educate my peers because the concussion movie itself is a great way to show students how concussions are dangerous, but the game of football is so beautiful that people are able to see past the injuries and really instill it in their lifestyle. So I found it, I found it difficult to find a better way to do that because at the time it wasn't practical. But yet we were able to have uh, volleyball games and softball games during school. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, just finding different ways to communicate the same information. Anything else? Clarification. Okay. I mean, I kind of know what he was doing, so. <laughs> <laughs> So looking at your information for prevention, it's great that you're looking into the technology. Um, and then you also say safe plays being practiced. What did that mean to you as a coach? Where did you see, you don't have that technology mm -hmm. in your hands, right? Yeah, no, obviously uh, being a high school football team with not a big budget, we actually reuse a lot of the same equipment every year as long as it's, uh, set, it's um, refurbished and everything. So as long as, Kids are practicing play, which means that they're not going ahead and doing their own thing. They have to listen to what coaches' directions are because they are. They do. We do want to win games, but we want to win them the right way in the safe way. So we don't want kids leaning in their head if it means preventing the other team from scoring a touchdown. You know, we want them to put full effort, but playing a safe way, Practice which means timing. yeah. So which means like tackling with your shoulder instead of leaning in with your head and knocking somebody's helmet off. Because it's about protecting yourself and the people on the other team. Feedback? Are we ready to move on? You did good, just next time just a little slower. 
Yeah, no, I was going to say, um, that is really true what you said, that you were just kind of uh, in your own little shell of freshman year. Yeah. I, I've seen you come out of that and become this big grown-up guy, and that, that, that really is true, and, and this is the kind of thing that I expected from you, because it's your interest, but it's also your caring. Yeah. That's good. One of the things you could have done to help me along so I would have paid attention to you, <laughs> instead of keep, keep saying CTE every time, just tell me once what it is so I didn't have to look it up while you were talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in that kind of presentation, you want to say to your audience, oh, I'm talking about this, and don't just call it the abbreviation. Name it first and then, okay? Mm -hmm. One little thing I have for you. Anybody else? Erin Moy. Okay, so I'm Erin Moy. Um, this is my capstone. For my capstone, I did the fashion show. This is the presentation. Okay, so um, the title of my senior capstone is called the Formation Fashion Show. Um, I decided to do a fashion show because I'm. I guess you could say I'm really interested in fashion. I like to dress up and I like to be myself. I like to be able to feel like I can wear what I want without caring about what others think about it. And I wanted to give everybody else that opportunity as well. Also, um, there, there's like, there's like a lot of people who stress about their capstone and try to come up with these, you know, secluded projects and I wanted to have fun with my project. I wanted my project to be big, so that's why I chose to do that. Okay, so my initial plans, I initially and originally planned to have a big fashion show here, not just for the students at Career, but for anybody who wanted to join, meaning students from Cross or a friend from New Haven Academy, stuff like that. Um, I planned it to be during the November time frame and I wanted to open it to everybody. Um, some obstacles that I came up, that I came across was security. The reason I couldn't do my initial plan was because I was being charged over $300 for security, which was something that I did not have. Um, I also had paperwork issues. From the time that I started my capstone class, I knew what I wanted to do, so I put in my activity request form and my building request form ASAP. But since I had to change my project, I ended up having to do my paperwork at least three times. Um, I also had problems with um, communication and stuff like that. Um, like I said, I did my paperwork, but the office didn't have my paperwork, so I had to keep doing it over and over again. Space, um, like I said, I did the building permit request, but because the office didn't have it, I had to refill it out again, <laughs> and I had to put down, more, I had to be more specific with it. I had to write down rehearsal dates, rehearsal times, and where I wanted to rehearse, um, and the date. I was iffy about, after I came up, after I settled what I wanted to do, I was iffy about if I would have enough time to get it done. So I was thinking that I would have to go talk to the capstone, um, I don't know if I call them administrators, but the people, the teachers that are in charge of capstone, and that I would have to get the date pushed back and see, you know, I have to work something out, but I ended up having enough time. Okay, so the final outcome, there was a fashion show at Career, and it was still the November time frame. Um, it was just, my audience was career staff and career students, and I also used career students. Okay, so some of the people I worked with. Earl Lobo, he was my mentor. Um, my freshman year, he helped another senior with their fashion show, and he kind of just like gave me the guidelines on what, what, what I was supposed to do and what I wasn't supposed to do. Um, Jay Kemp, he helped me bring my vision to life. He kind of got me through the, it's not gonna work phase part of it, and kind of like pushed me to keep growing, although I kept running into um, problems. Um, Ms. Duff, she helped me get, she made sure, she made it her business to make sure that everything was set in stone for me. Mr. Cotto, I had to refill 
out my um my activity request form and he got it pushed through as soon as possible for me to be able to do my project. Um, Natalia and Maya, they're two students here and they do makeup, so they were like kind of my resources to be able to do makeup without having to pay for it. Um, Gina Benson, she's a career alumni and she was my photographer. And as you can see, a handful of career students and most of the most of the girls that I used were from my cheerleading team, so I also used that as a resource as well. Um, these are just some websites that I use since the, since um, my show was based off of the theme. Of my show was based off of women's liberation and like the during the civil rights era and a lot of stuff that was going on in the world today. Um, I use these websites to look. First of all, I use the first website to see how actual people who like fa do fashion shows for a living, like that's their job, to see how they how their setup is and how I should have manage the time of the scenes, how do I come up with the theme of the scenes, how do I get everything to work the right way, and then I use that website to um, basically see what fashion was like in the civil rights era and during that time and how the way people dressed affected women and people of color in general. Okay, so this connects to my magnet theme. One, I'm a business student. Um, I took marketing one with Mr. Heller and he kind of helped me like although this is not a business, it to me it was it was like being an entrepreneur because I did this. This is my show. I did this. So he kind of helped drill that in me. Like I can do this. I can start something and I can make it big. Um, I took fashion and merchandising with Miss Keith. That kind of just like drew me in with the whole fashion thing, and I actually used the designer. So the merchandising part of it kind of like tied everything together. Um, business concepts and careers. Business concepts and careers helped me be able to make my presentation and it also taught me presentation skills as well. In digital media, Ms. Bryson helped me come up with the flyers and stuff and the programs for my show. supervision it all worked out well um, looking back I would probably say one thing that I would work on or if I had to do this over I would probably work on my time management although I think I managed time pretty well I only had three days to rehearse because I have a jam-packed schedule outside of school so I only had three Wednesdays to rehearse and that was one Wednesday a week and I got lucky with the third day. So I would say I would probably try to do things in advance. And I've learned through this project that no matter what you have going on outside, if you don't have time, you have to make time because there's not enough hours in a day to do what you need to do. And these are just some pictures. like a video or something um i actually the photographer she videoed on her camera but the videos wouldn't save as videos they saved as pictures and i couldn't find the person who recorded somebody recorded the whole show because my capstone and glamy's capstone were going on at the same time and they recorded both of our capstones i just can't find who it is and i've been looking since the show and i just couldn't find out who it was so i couldn't find video you should um like put it on youtube <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. If I get the whole video, I was yes. surprised. Yes. 
So what was your message to those girls? Like what, when they were on that stage, what was the message? Well, most of the girls were freshmen. Most of them were freshmen and seniors just because I used, like I said, I used the girls for my cheer team and I used, yeah, I used the girls for my cheer team and I used my friends. My friends were seniors and they were girls for my cheer team. Yeah. My teammates, they were like, you know, kind of new to the school. So it was, to me, mm -hmm. it was an opportunity for me, but it was also an opportunity for them to, mm -hmm. Freshly being in the school to be able to express themselves and not be scared to do things like this. Like if you want to be in a pet rally or if you want to dance or you want to do something on the stage or you want to put something on like this, I wanted them to know that like it's high school and, and middle school teachers make high school seem like it's such this scary place, but it's okay and it's okay to be who you are. It's okay to wear what you want. It's okay to like what you like. It's okay to be you, period. So that was my message. You have questions, Kyle? Not really. Uh, I saw you walk through the process, so I'm familiar with that. And um, I just thought that that show was exceptional. Um, I just think that I think you did a really good job. I, the, this, not as much as a question as a comment. I'm very pleased to see that you went a different track than what a lot of the other students usually go, right? And you pushed yourself. Um, and you made a direct correlation to the things that we've been teaching you here and throughout the uh, array of business courses that you've taken because, and I think you hit the nail right on the head, um, and almost what the real message of this entire process is supposed to be, I think you kind of got when you said that this is not a business, but this you did this on your own. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Not that you didn't need help, because everyone needs help everywhere, yeah, but you I did it on your help. own. I didn't you, think I would you, do it. If you did it your way, it was gonna go Aaron's way, and Aaron had to be able to see that what um, you, because everyone sometimes has a real clear vision. And everything looks great, and it's all rainbows and unicorns, and it never goes that way. But you, you battled through that. You put it on the way you wanted to do it, and you were very successful with it, and you were pleased at the outcome. And that just shows you the capabilities that you have. And for you, I think everyone who knows you knows that you're probably going to end up in the fashion industry in one way, shape, or form. <laughs> uh, you know, and this, I think, should um, just reinforce to you that you have you have the ability to do so. You have a good vision for that. I think you're gonna be highly successful in that. And you just basically took a microcosm of your career of the future and and did it right now. And that is what we want accomplished, you know, in one way, shape, form. I think you did that very well. I'm, I'm just very pleased in the way you did it. Um, and I'm very happy that you were successful. Aaron, um, did you feel like you needed more time outside the classroom or more inside the classroom to do that work? Um, I honestly, because, see this is how I look at it, the whole capstone project in general. The capstone class, it's not hard as long as you do your journals and you can't, and that's the thing, a lot of people try to wing the journals, like just try to type anything in the journals. You can't just type anything in the journals if you're not actually making progress, if you're not doing work. So being in the capstone class, I think that was the easiest part of it. I felt like I needed more time after school, I won't say outside of school or outside of the class, but more time after school, which I had to force myself to say, okay, I can't do this. Meaning, like, I can't do this thing that I have going on outside of school because I have to do this for school. I had to get my priorities straight, and although I wanted to do this or I had this to do, it was like, I can't do it because I have this to do. I have to do, I have to get it done. So I would say that I probably needed more time, but like I said, that was a lesson learned to me because I, I put so much on myself. I take on all these things, and then when there's something that really needs to be done that I don't have time for, it's like, okay, now how am I gonna make time for it? And then I'm stressed out, like, okay, I don't have time to do this, I can't do this. I had to literally tell myself, you can't do this because you need to get this done. So I think that I, w I would probably say that I needed more time, but that wasn't anybody else's fault but mine. I could have gave myself more time than that. I could have asked my coach, or I could have said to my coach, I need to order training for two days a week instead of one. I could have said A, B, C, and D and made this process easier. It didn't have to be as hard as I made it, but it's a lesson learned. I want to say too, um, Erin, you are a boss. <laughs> she, de she delegated responsibilities to all, like about 10 different people, and they all had to carry out the responsibility, and if they didn't, they felt bad about it. I just <laughs> want to say one thing. Well, myself follow included, this people yeah. will be back to me by Thursday, Yo, approved, right. I'm like, oh, I'm right, man, really good this man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, but that's good that you have to have, and you want a really good product. 
you have to have high expectations of the people working around you to do that well. I actually had to earn a uh, sophomore year. Mrs. Will pushed me. She really did. Because that would make me give up on biology. And the amount of, like, the change that, like, she basically progressed so much since she, I saw her as a sophomore, first year she entered my class. I'm very proud of you, Erin. Thank you. I need to 
uh, I wanted to help other students that way they were prepared. Because as you know, uh, if you've ever noticed, middle schoolers, they have like the high school fairs. But when you really think about it, we don't have the, the career fairs that we really need to enable for us to make an educated choice. The different um, people that helped me, Mr. Kyle with activities forms, Mr. Schneider, if you guys saw him running around looking crazy on the 18th, that's because he was helping me out with um, the shifts for my business, for my event. He went up to the business teacher saying, okay, you can come down this time. Because of the shift that happened, we had to make, that to make, that to make it different. The different uh, resources that I use, the human resources, and then a quick search on Google, looking up different types of careers. Again, the impact and reactions of the students and the teachers. Um, like I said, the teachers were extremely excited. Um, a few of them had surprise faces when I brought up the uh, concept of the event. They were like, "Oh wow, really? This is this is something you're doing? Yeah, we're seeing a good gap." So, and um, students from the feedback forms that I um, collected, they felt like it was like it was effective. Something that I didn't mention. Sorry, is that uh, how it connects to my magnet? I'm a business student here at Career, and these three classes I feel help. I felt help me um, be able to do this project, marketing, marketing. You have a business plan. You have to go through it. You have to have a problem that you want to solve and create a business to help solve it. And so my problem was that I didn't feel like I was educated enough to make my own decision about what career I want to go into. And so to help other students figure out what they want to do uh, career-wise, business students at least, I created this event. Computer apps, I had to learn how to make spreadsheets. Um, I already know how to make spreadsheets, thank you uh, for computer apps, uh, pertaining to information that had the names of the uh, vendors that I contacted, who I was talking to from that business, when I contacted them, if they were able to come, and any other information that I needed to grab from them. The business concepts, proper emails. There was a generic email that I sent out to most of the businesses asking for uh, people from their business that were able to come out, or if I could just get a representative from the business in general, or to individuals like I had to do, and um, networking is something I was learning business concepts. If I had not known Jay, then I would not have um, the resources that I have uh, now pertaining to the event. He was able to give me many of the resources that I went to. Uh, the two people that were at the event are through the connections that I made through him and his connections. How I have grown a career. I am more knowledgeable about um, the world in general, how to uh, force yourself in the world to make uh, yourself known to be able to do things like this, to be able to put yourself out there, to be able to create an event that actually impacts people. Networking, I have, networking is extremely important, as I feel, um, like I said earlier, if I had not known Jay, if I had not connected to his networks, then I would not have the event, that would not have had the event. And I learned how to be patient. You really need patience to uh, go through career, and I've learned patience from when I was the morning of. Did you teach us? <laughs> <laughs> if any of you guys were at the senior uh, meeting, then you guys would know what we, how much patience we had to have. Um, patience. The morning of, I was uh, searching for the people that were supposed to come in. That said, yes, we're going to come in. What time? And all the information. I've given all the information out, and that was. Really literally scrambling around school like, okay, I have uh, Miss Diana in the front, uh, shoot all the people that were coming to the gym and uh, doing with the emails and stuff like that, asking them, uh, the vendors, if they were planning on coming again. And so, yes, I had a lot of patience with dealing with people and their schedules and also the activities request form, which takes two weeks. <laughs> So, like I said, the final outcome is that it wasn't the walk around that, 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 that I wanted. Instead, it was the ask and answer panel, uh, but it still worked out extremely well. The students learned something, the freshmen learned something, which is what I was happy about. The seniors were extremely attractive, as you can see. The target markets were here. Like I said earlier, problems that I faced communication. 
two week turnaround to get the answer back to me and she shot me to um, activity saying I had to go to them first, which set me back two weeks when I could have just gone to activities. Um, time management, uh, as a senior, it is, this is a very strenuous project with um, college applications. I also take col uh, college classes at Quinnipiac and things like that. And so trying to put all this together is, uh, takes me to, do, uh, to be able to manage my time and solutions. Um, besides me being, uh, having a lot of things on my plate, I was able to prioritize. I was able to get things done for this event, for my other classes, for here, for my extracurricular activities that I do after school. And I was able to keep everyone updated. Whether it was the vendors, just reminding them or asking them uh, for extra information and keeping my mentor updated and keeping the school updated and keeping the gym teachers and the business teachers updated. That was um, all the things I had to uh, both prioritize. So, despite me saying that I had uh, these people help me, these pro projects are really up to us, the students, to get it done. We're not supposed to rely on our mentor, we're not supposed to rely on our teachers, we're not supposed to rely on those that we're asking help for. It's really us that are supposed to put it together and really do it. And so, that's why I took self-initiative and accountability. This event was all on me. I was I didn't go and say, well, can you just help me here? In the, can you please just, um, this is, I can't do it all, and uh, I really just want to give it all to you, and I'll just step back. That's not what I did. I learned that that's what I really need to um, take charge in. The takeaway um, was I had to over, I, the old adage stands true. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. I hope for the best. Um, I didn't plan uh, for the worst as much as I should have, but it still came out great. And so what I need to uh, do in the future when I'm planning events like this, or even in everyday life, is that I need to over plan. Um, 